In order to write code that is easy to work with in the Ruby terminal, it's best to understand how things work in the first place. Because at a glance, it might seem that irb just echoes the last value evaluated. Whereas what's really going on is a bit more interesting. So say if I create a hash, we can see the output is a bit different than what I just wrote. Whereas I use the column and the space here, the output contains just the rocket syntax. So what's really going on is that every single time I write something, behind the scenes, Yerb calls inspect on this value. And this is the reason why we can see something different than what I just wrote. And to prove this, I'm going to create a string. Let's say ABC. And I will overwrite the inspect method on this string. And I'll use define singleton method to do that. So let's say maybe this should output hello world abc, well not abc, sorry, self. And then if I call x, we can see hello world abc. So the idea is that x didn't really change. What has changed though is the way x is displayed in the terminal. So for example, puts x is still abc. And of course, x dot uh, length is basically the length of ABC, which is free. Let's see how we can leverage this knowledge. And to do that, I'm going to create a class called connection. And we are going to initialize it with a user and a password. And of course, I will store these inside an instance variable. And now if I'm going to, to load this file, which was named output.rb. And then I will do connection new and instantiate this class with a user called root and the password secret. And of course, we can see some output, which, as I said, this actually comes from the inspect method because almost all objects in Ruby have inspect defined on them. Anyway, what we need to do to improve this class is to override this method. So say we um, want to change the order, whereas now it says password and user, we want to say user and password. So uh, let's do that. But first of all, we can see that the way this is being displayed, it says uh, hash and then the less than sign and it ends with the greater than. So first of all, I'm going to create a method called inspect. And then inside here, I'm going to use the hash and the less than and greater than characters. And inside here, I will print the class name, which should be self.class. And then our variables, which basically should be user equals at user and of course, password equals at password. And then if I load this again, we can see this class is in the new format. So we have now user and password. Let's go a bit further. Say, for example, we want to replace the word secret, basically the password with just uh, some stars. Well, what do we need to do? It's actually quite simple. First of all, let's typecast the password to a string just in case it's nil. And then we'll replace any character, which should be matched by the dot with a star. All right. And now if I load the file again, we can see this says now password star star star. Now this approach, as nice as it is, it has some uh, downsides and it quickly falls apart on more complex structures. So take this class, for example, where we have a hash and I'm going to load it and we'll see exactly what I'm talking about in a moment. And I'll instantiate it with uh, some string here. And the output is neatly formatted and it's not just that, it's actually quite clever. 
For example, if the terminal is larger, the output will resize itself as well. And aside from that, you probably notice the colors even in the previous example and even this address, which when I overwrote the class, it basically disappeared. And if I want to do something like we just did earlier, and I wanted to print value before properties, we will lose on a lot of benefits by just using inspect. Another approach is required. So when we want to print things a bit nicer in the terminal, a common way to do that is by using pretty print. So for example, pretty print Z, and it formats things rather nicely here as well. And what's really interesting about this entire thing is that IRB not only does it search for the inspect method, it also searches for another method as well. And that method is called pretty print. And this takes an argument which is an instance of the pretty print class. So to recap, if IRB finds this method defined, it's going to call this. If it doesn't find it, it's going to call inspect on the method. So right now, I want to print things a bit nicer. Say, um, I want to print our class and I want it to have uh, this format and I want to print this address, the pretty print class can do that for us. And to do that, I will call pretty print object address group. So this method basically is going to create an object like this. And this takes us an argument, the class we want to describe, in our case is text or basically self. And then I need to provide the block and let's just start with the value. So this should be pretty print text and then at value equals and next line we want to print well the value itself which so it should be pretty print and then call the pretty print method to output things and then at value which might seem a bit confusing but it will make sense in a moment. And now if I reload this class we can see this printed a bit nicer, but there's a problem. There's no space here, as you can see, and you might be tempted to put a space here, but that's actually not the way to do it. There's another attribute here, another method called breakable, and this is preferable, and the reason will be apparent immediately. So I'm going to load this class again, and we can see a space here. The reason I said this is preferable is that if this window is smaller, for example, the text will resize automatically. So there's definitely some value provided by breakable. Anyway, let's also add the other value, which is, well, the properties here, right? So uh, I'm going to create another text called uh, properties and, and then print the properties themselves, which should be, well, add properties. And I do need to add another breakable between these two as well. And now if I reload this class, we can see it printed a bit nicer. And of course, if the window is bigger, we should see it different as well. So this is what breakable does for us. These pretty print objects can do a lot of things. However, they don't necessarily need to be complex because every single time we call pretty print on these values, if these have their own methods defined on them, then those will be called and this is the reason why we see this hash neatly formatted here. So let's actually see how this is implemented. In order to override the properties method, I need to create an object and I'm going to call this properties. And I will inherit from a hash. And the thing with this is that Unlike a regular hash, I'm going to override the pretty print method. And for now, I'm going to print just some text. 
Maybe this is a hash exclamation mark. And then I'm going to replace this from being a regular hash to a properties properties hash type. And because it's a hash, I need to instantiate it using the square brackets. Next, I'm going to reload this class. Now t is still the same because I need to instantiate it again. So now we can see properties and the value is this is a hash. Anyway, so how can we print things a bit nicer, something in this format? So we can format this a bit nicer to look like before by using another method called group. And this takes us an argument indentation level. And the next two are the, well, the opening and closing values of this group. And because this is a hash, it should be a left curly brace and then a right curly brace. And the content should be what values we want to print here. And for now, let's just do well, let's just iterate over the key values. Key value. And then say maybe pretty print text and the key and pretty print the value. And now if I reload the class, we can see it looking like this. And if we want some spaces between these, these are not difficult to do. I can just, uh, I can do pretty print breakable, for example. But if I want a comma, there's another method as well called comma breakable. So let's actually reload and try it again. And we can see there's a comma here. Now I'm not going to fix this because I think it's quite self-explanatory on how to do it. Because there was something more I wanted to show you. Right now we have a method called pretty print and this is being called by the irb shell. The problem is that users can't call this method directly and sometimes they might use uh, inspect on this object and they will get a different output than they see in irb and that might come as a surprise which is something we want to avoid. And a workaround for this would be to create an alias for this method alias inspect and here we'll do pretty print. Now there is a problem and that is pretty print takes an argument. So we can't just do inspect here and we might need to define another method maybe called pretty print inspect and inside here we would call pretty print and pass it in an instance of the pretty print class but you don't need to do any of this because this method called pretty print inspect actually exists on all the objects so this code will just work so now i'll reload the object and if i do maybe put t dot inspect we can see basically the same output so this is calling a pretty print behind the scenes even if you're not planning on using inspect or pretty print in your code just knowing about them will really help you understand some of the APIs you're working with. And to exemplify this further, I'm going to open up the Rails console in a project I worked on in an earlier episode. So I'm going to run here the command user all. So does this really perform a query? It appears to run it, whereas user all dot class doesn't do anything. So based on what we know about inspect and pretty print, we know that the query is happening, but it's happening in these methods instead. And we can even see inside the code if inspect is defined, which it is. And let's have a look for pretty print as well, which is also defined. So Rails actually has two different definitions for these, but hopefully this helps you understand what's going on under the hood. The way Rails uses inspect and pretty print is certainly creative, but it's also confusing, at least the first time you encounter it. So it's best to avoid doing anything crazy and keep things simple, as it's easy to go the other way around and you're actually doing more harm than good by overriding inspect.